but EMDR was the huge thing that really made the difference, like the huge, huge, big jump for me. If you've been considering doing EMDR and you're currently doing some research on the different ways you can do this, I have some important information for you. And I have one approach that you might not have heard of yet. And you'll also be hearing directly from three brave people who agreed to be interviewed by me to share their stories and their experience doing virtual EMDR. And each of these three people use the EMDR for significantly different issues. So I'm going to help you think through which approach approach to EMDR can work for the specific issue you are struggling with. So I was a psychotherapist for 20 years and I did EMDR a good portion of that time. I'm an EMDR approved consultant. I no longer do psychotherapy. I closed my therapy practice. I began this channel to bring information to people worldwide to help them. So by the way, if you do support what I'm doing here, please do subscribe and give this a like if you like it because that's always a big help. And I have a number of other videos on EMDR and a few more to come. So if you're this far in the research process, my guess is you have a good sense of what EMDR is. But since a lot of people hear about it and they get sort of a basic sense that there's something you're doing with your eyes, I do want to highlight a handful of things about EMDR because that also can impact your decision about how you access EMDR therapy. So the number one thing to keep in mind with regard to EMDR is that it is a comprehensive therapy technique. It is not not only the eye movements, it's, you know, that's the part that gets a lot of press that people think about because it seems a little weird, you know, that you're going to follow somebody's finger or a light bar. But EMDR actually combines many different therapy modalities and it has a number of very important stages to it. It's actually an eight phase treatment. If a therapist is working with you, they probably start with some history taking. And then there's a client preparation phase, which I do want to talk about with you. There's an assessment of what the current a issue is that's bringing the person into therapy and what that might tie to, right? So the history taking helps the client and therapist jointly come up with the different major trigger events in their life that pertain to the current day problem. The fourth stage is desensitization. Go over and over the memory, desensitize it. The fifth stage is called installation, but this is really the reprocessing. As you desensitize, some of those trigger events. You've already identified what the negative core belief is. You've identified a reasonably stated positive core belief that you'd rather feel. And the installation phase is installing that positive core belief. With the body scan, the therapist guides you to see if there's sort of anything left over that you are physically feeling when you think of those trigger events. And then if there is, you process those feelings. And then each session should have a sense of closure and the entire series of sessions tied to any one event should have a closure. And then, of course, there's a reevaluation of where you are, what else might have to be processed. So there's a lot that goes into it other than the bilateral stimulation while you're going over the memory. Now, I mentioned I wanted to come back to the client preparation stage because this is key. This is a period of helping the client develop resources to physiologically regulate, right? So if you are very, very anxious, developing tools to help you calm down. If you go in into a freeze state. It's developing tools to help you not get to that freeze state to reactivate. So grounding techniques, breathing techniques, there's a lot of pieces of resourcing and different clients will need different amounts of resourcing. So this is something to keep in mind for yourself because if you have a very, very hard time with emotional regulation and you get to periods of time where you're not functioning well, the resourcing stage will be longer. On the other hand, if you're pretty highly functioning in general, you can cope and you can manage your emotions, but there's just a number of things that really get to you or you're just way too stressed, the resourcing stage will probably be shorter. So this is all going to apply to how you choose to access EMDR. I promise you. So bear with me. In EMDR theory, current day problems are tied to certain difficult events in your life. And let me just pause here for a second, because if somebody's had a really good life and then they have a single incident trauma, then that doesn't apply, but you can 
can process that single day trauma. But for most people, extremely difficult current day events are going to tie to earlier events. I talked a little bit about this in my video on EMDR for anxiety, how you bring up a memory, identify the negative core belief that goes with it, identify the body feelings, and then you do the float back. It's not about the therapist telling you why you're feeling this way. You figure it out. So these trigger events are called nodes and the memories are stored usually with lots of bells and whistles. Sometimes there's not all that much of a storyline. Sometimes it could be a very strong sense of smell. It could be a sounds. Flashbacks are like all of it, right? With a flashback, you like when you think about it, it just you get a whole 3D experience. But even with non-flashbacks, the memories are stored with the thoughts, feelings of the time. And then each succeeding experience that is in any way similar reinforces that. So with EMDR, if you find the originating node and you can go back and process that, it really seems to flow through to all those other experiences. So you probably don't have to reprocess every single one of those. Okay, so that was quite a bit on how EMDR works. But if you keep in mind the resourcing to start, the knowing how to calm yourself down or regulate your emotions, the desensitizing of the trigger memories, and then the reprocessing of those negative core beliefs, you'll have the core of what EMDR will do for you. And the rest of this video will make sense about how you access it. So number one choice, if somebody can find a therapist they trust who does EMDR, that would be my top recommendation. Really, it would. Particularly if you can find an EMDR a therapist who is trained in the issue you're dealing with. So if your issues show up as anxiety, finding somebody who really works with anxiety. If you have complex PTSD and dissociation, finding somebody who works with early trauma and dissociation, very helpful. The main regulating body for EMDR is emdria.org. They do have a list of therapists. They certify people. They have a whole process, which is what I went through to become certified, and then an improved consultant. They conduct a lot of research. So that would be one place to start to look for somebody. And most people will choose to do EMDR in person if they can. But I actually found that working virtually with somebody was just about as effective as doing it in person. So if you find a therapist that you want to work with, but they only do virtual work, I think that still is a very good option. So then let's talk about virtual EMDR. So the virtual EMDR kind of is talked about in two different ways. One is virtual EMDR could be considered doing it in person, which I just talked about, however, via video with your therapist. But another option is a software program called Virtual EMDR. I've tried that myself and I interviewed a lot of people who have tried this, so I do want to share their stories with you. And the Virtual EMDR website really walks you through step by step this process. So there's a number of components here that if you are just simply trying to do EMDR on your own, you probably won't think through. But what is the negative core belief? How do you narrow that down? How do you pick a positive core belief? And then once you desensitize that memory being led through the process of installing the positive core belief. So the software walks you through these steps and they do have some coaches that you can access for an extra fee, but the overall software is is relatively reasonably priced, I believe. So I'm going to share the three stories with you. But before I go there, I do want to mention the third option. So the third option is simply doing self-administered EMDR. There are light bar videos on YouTube. People will just sort of plop themselves down in front of their computer, watch the lights, or do the tapping. Many people have said this really helps. So I did put out a video on whether self-administered EMDR is a good idea for you. I would definitely say that I think it's really important to have that resourcing before you jump into doing self-administered EMDR. And then also an assessment of how challenging the memories are that you need to go through. How challenging is the issue in your life right now. All of that probably goes into it. So with regard to the virtual EMDR, I'll tell you that I reached out to my email list asking who had tried virtual EMDR and would they be willing to talk to me about their experience? Was it positive? Was it not? What happened? And four people agreed to talk with me, so I'm going to share little bits of their videos with you today. So I'm going to start with Maggie. Now Maggie had gone to see an EMDR therapist about 15 years ago to deal with some anxiety and she did find it 
hugely helpful. So now, 15 years later, she was struggling with some health anxiety and she decided to try the software. And I'll share a little bit of what she had to say. There were some days when I found it very, very helpful, but in general, I found it difficult to do on my own, particularly the jump from going from desensitization to the positive affirmation. Many times I was kind of just going through the ropes. However, Maggie also said that it did actually bring her anxiety down. That would work, and I would definitely feel better, less anxious. When I was using it primarily for was more of an anxiety about some physical issues that I've had for quite a while. So, um, And I think it did help. It's a wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. I really do think it helps defuse a lot of things and and work through um, stuff. But it wasn't um, it wasn't a magic bullet by any means. So if you listen to what Maggie is saying and you think about what I just told you about the whole EMDR processing, she did find it helpful for the desensitizing. And actually, people who are working totally on their own doing self-administered EMDR, what I feel most of them are doing is working on the desensitization, which is an important piece but it's missing a really important part, that reprocessing of that negative core belief into a positive adaptive belief is the piece that will help you ongoing in your life. So as Maggie said, she was able to desensitize, but on her own, she really couldn't get to that reprocessing part. Now, Eric is somebody who learned about EMDR on my channel, and he had downloaded the PDF that I have on transforming that negative core belief, and he jumped into using virtual virtual EMDR, even though he had never done EMDR with a therapist. He had worked with therapists, but not done EMDR with them. And after just two sessions, he saw major improvement in his ability to cope with his fear of heights. Now, I talked more about him in the video I released last week on EMDR for anxiety. So if you want to hear his full story, you can listen there, but I'll give you a little bit of a clip here. So the first time you did it, you imagine kind of like the worst of this fear in a scenario and your anxiety anxiety went up while you were doing it with all the physiological. And then when they had you walk through the positive, it kind of calmed everything down a bit. Yeah. So it's funny, right? While you're looking at the ball moving from like, so I bring up a thought, right? Like, let's say like I'm at the mall and I'm by the ledge where I can look down. So I'm feeling the anxiety, right? I'm bringing it to mind and I keep bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. And it's kind of like the ball is kind of just like erasing the effect of like what I feel. It's really weird. And Eric started by working on his current day issue and it was really helping on that. And then he also began to go back to some earlier trigger events. And given that he had been thinking about this concept of the negative core belief and working with it, he was conscious of the need to continue the process through the point where he begins to work with the adaptive positive. And if you are going into EMDR, whether it's completely on your own or with something like virtual EMDR, I encourage you not to stop before you really install that positive belief. And actually, that's true if you're working with a therapist too, because once in a while, clients will be like, oh, I feel better. I'm like, yeah, that was good. Thank you. But you really have to install the adaptive positive belief that counters your negative. So Paul is somebody who did not think that he had any real trauma in his life. But through watching some of my videos, through some of the research he was doing, and through reading a couple of books that he found very profound, he realized that he probably did have ongoing little t traumas in his childhood. So Paul was struggling with a number of things, rumination, insecurity, like self-esteem issues. And let's hear what he had to say about the rumination piece. Ruminating. I really liked ruminating because ruminating was my life. You know, I didn't think it was wrong to ruminate. I didn't know it was a bad thing, you know? I mean, I, I started to discover that years ago, but, you know, but then there's understanding it's not good and then stopping doing it. But that you have an option. I think I just go like, that's the way I am. I, you know, I tried to stop. I couldn't stop. And so 30-year process, and I still can get into it a little bit, but I'm, I'm so much better. So when I started doing the virtual EMDR, it was a miracle for me. It really, really was. I mean, it just, it, every single time I met, I would do it, maybe the first like 60, I think I did about 60 times, I would actually go through the whole process 
and try to come up with stuff, write stuff down, you know, type it in and do the whole thing. So it, it was really, you know, I've shared with people, you know, it changed everything within me. All that anxiety and, no, no, not all the anxiety, giant parts of the anxiety, the toxic anxiety, it just really made a huge difference. And now I basically do, I don't fill everything out. I'll just sit down and just do the EMDR and just take my the feeling to it. And so he said that when he does that, when he brings whatever it is he's ruminating about to the EMDR, the next steps fall into place for him. It's not that the, the craziness there, you know, I'm, I'm calmer, I'm just, I can just do other things. He also shared with me that he and his wife had recently started a new business, and he did not think that he would have been able to do that had he not gone through with doing the EMDR. The other thing that ha that's happened is, uh, well, we've been planning this for a long time, but my wife and I opened up business a month ago. So what's really happened is I, I've kind of realized that in a large sense, I actually just saw it to my sister this morning. I said, without doing the EMDR, I couldn't have done this. So when I asked Paul if he would recommend virtual EMDR to other people, this is what he had to say. Well, and again, I, all I can do is, is come from my perspective. It just made such a huge difference for me. I just encourage everybody to do it. Just do it. I mean, it's like, well, I don't know. I guess for some people it's expensive. It's like to me, it costs nothing, you know, relatively nothing. And just try it. I couldn't believe the difference it made. And everything that I've done in my life that's made little bits of difference. But EMDR was the huge thing that really made the huge, huge, big jump for me. The fourth person who talked to me did not want to have her video or audio shared, which I totally understand. She's somebody who definitely had complex PTSD. She had a very, very long history of childhood abuse, quite severe, and she had done a lot of therapy. She was very, very insightful and really put a lot of effort into her recovery. She had worked very well with a therapist. She then switched to working with an EMDR therapist. It was very helpful. After a few months, her EMDR therapist told her that she thought that they were finished, which did kind of surprise me because with the type of history that she had, that would have been really fast. In any case, Sarah decided she wanted to continue on her own. She did the virtual EMDR. She also had downloaded that PDF that I offer and that had really helped her work through what some of the memories were that she wanted to target as well as kind of like what her negative core belief really was. And she used the virtual EMDR and it was really helping her. Now on this one, I caution you a little bit because I do think that with complex PTSD, I think it's really hard to do this work on your own. Sarah's somebody, she had a very strong religious belief that was very supportive to her. She had a number of activities that she found very regulating, including like taking her dog on walks, spending time alone was very healing for her. But she and her family were struggling financially. She was almost completely cut off from her family of origin. And in some ways, she didn't have a huge support network. So with that grouping of a situation, I'm not sure I, I would be really cautious about virtual EMDR or self-administered, but she was finding it very helpful. So she said that in working with the virtual EMDR software, the fact that it was prompting her with questions about what she was feeling physically and emotionally was super helpful for her because she realized that sometimes she was not even aware of what she was feeling. And some of her memories had almost no, none of those bells and whistles that I was talking about earlier. They were sort of like distant, like I knew it happened, but she couldn't quite access it. So she actually found that she was becoming more aware of her feelings, both physical and emotional, as she was going through the process. But she did also have flashbacks that began to come up for her as she was doing the EMDR, some of which were quite intense, and yet she persevered and she kept going through them. And again, I do want to say this is unusual, but she kind of felt at this point in her life, she felt like, look, and those memories are there. This stuff is there. Ignoring it, not helping me. And while going into it is really unpleasant and uncomfortable, there's no way to heal if I don't do that. So she was fully convinced of that. She kept going and she ended up with pretty good results. So Sarah had a really strong feeling that she wanted to talk to me about all of this because she wanted to help other people. She really was beginning to move into a point in her life where she really wanted to help others. But given confidentiality and all of that, she didn't want the video or audio to be used. So I just want to share this quote that she said during our interview. She now has moments where, wow, 
wow, I feel like I'm standing on the tallest mountain. I feel like I've won the lottery. I know how much I've suffered. I know where I was and now I'm here. And she doesn't attribute her progress only to the EMDR, but largely, to be honest. So I really hope that this video has helped you understand some of the different ways you can access EMDR. I hope it's helped you understand what it is EMDR does, because that will help you in your choice of how you want to access it. And I encourage you, if you are able, to continue on your healing journey. And I think EMDR can be super powerful. I will include the link for the virtual EMDR in the description to this video in case you're interested in checking that out. And I hope you subscribe to my channel. I have more coming out on EMDR and other ways to help with a variety of struggles. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next week.